Hey, good morning, and this is Matt with Two Feet Two Worlds, and today I'm at an interesting uh, cemetery. It's called Fourth Street Cemetery here in Dover, Ohio. Uh, really, um, there's one grave here that I would like to visit today, uh, and I'll talk about it more later. But the man's name is William Quantrill. Quantrill, I don't exactly know how to say it, but uh, William Quantrill. Uh, he's a historic figure in Civil War uh, history, um, and he's actually uh, semi-famous for a couple other reasons. And uh, we're going to go visit his grave today. I'm going to talk about the history behind it. So uh, won't you come with me and uh, explore? There are a couple of these tombstones here. There's one that's more impressive than this, but they have a sphere on top, and you can see how big this sphere is. It's the perfect sphere that's carved out of uh, granite or marble. Can't really tell, probably granite. Here's something you don't see very often, but his name is Peter Andreas, Ohio, Private 3rd Regiment, Ohio Militia, uh, fought in the War of 1812. Died in 1864 while Civil War was going on. Probably never thought that his own country would be fighting um, and so divided at the time, especially after having fought in the War of 1812. A lot of the graves here are really hard to read. Um, there's a lot of older ones uh, and actually uh, kind of faded away. Uh, there's some that are made out of uh, different materials that actually uh, have survived the test of time and are quite easy to read. Uh, but as I'm going to show you, there are quite a few that are missing tombstones. Uh, like right here, uh, there's many of these scattered all around here, where it looks like uh, it looks like a tombstone used to be here, but it's no longer here. Here we have an entire area where it looks like there are no graves, only a couple, you can see them sticking up out there, but I believe this whole area was filled with tombstones, if I'm not mistaken, because if I look out here in the grass, you can actually see these areas where there are tombstones. For instance, we have John P. Reck, died 1845, first pastor of Grace Lutheran Church of Dover. This memorial placed here at the 125th anniversary of its founding, September 16, 1962. But there are many of many areas like this where there are gravestones that have just fallen over.
and as you can see there aren't many uh, gravestones in relation uh, to what's actually standing. Um, it's kind of sad. see this one has a little bit of a hole near the bottom there bricks falling through some damage Here's something you don't see very often, but his name is Peter Andreas, Ohio, Private 3rd Regiment, Ohio Militia, uh, fought in the War of 1812. Died in 1864 while Civil War was going on. Probably never thought that his own country would be fighting, um, and so divided at the time, especially after having fought in the War of 1812. And here we have the grave of William Quantrill. He was a captain in Missouri Cavalry for the Confederate State Army. Uh, died June 6, 1865. It's actually uh, my sister's birthday and my anniversary. Very interesting. Um, you can see uh, he's a well-honored uh, man, especially with the uh, um, Confederate uh, States of America, people who um, hold to that uh, that belief. but. Here's where he lies. What I find interesting about uh, this man is this is actually one of three graves where he is buried. Uh, there's one in Missouri, there's one in Kentucky, and there's one here in Dover, Ohio. Uh, his skull is not buried here uh, in this grave. There are some bones. Uh, it's not known exactly which bones are buried here but it's one of three grave sites. And as the story goes, uh, when he died, his longtime friend dug up his uh, bones and actually uh, was looking to sell them. And uh, later on, uh, they were able to get uh, those bones back and bury some of them here, some in Missouri and some in Kentucky. Um, very strange story, very interesting story. I don't know of many people that can say uh, they were buried, uh, or they know somebody that's buried in three places. Uh, but here we have one of his uh, three burial spots. Mr. Quantrill actually uh, died um, in 1865. He was shot in the back and paralyzed. I believe died three days later. Uh, what had happened was he had ordered the killing of 150 men and boys who were able to carry a rifle. Uh, he had raided a small town out in Missouri and had actually uh, ordered the killing. Um, and I would say probably the murder of 150 uh, men and boys. And what also, I find interesting about this is who was traveling with him. Uh, there were two, um, two people that were traveling with him during this time, uh, Jesse and Frank James. Uh, I have to do a little more research of whether or not they were actually there uh, during the time that he ordered the killing of uh, these 150 men, but it, it's very interesting fact nonetheless um, if they were maybe it had a little bit of uh, 
a little bit of weight to why they became what they became, uh, Jesse and Frank James, uh, the famous outlaws. Here is a house I was told by a gentleman that worked at a body shop in the area that this was where Quentrill grew up. Um, I'm not sure to the validity of his claims, but uh, that's what he told me. Uh, this little house, it definitely looks like it could be old enough uh, to be true, but I'd have to do some research on him and the area where he came from. But. It's not far from the cemetery, which is in between the, the, these two houses right here. The last grave I'm going to show you here is, is the only one that is fenced in with this wrought iron fence. And it has a very impressive monument. You can see the, the fence is very, very nice. I'm starting to show some wear and tear here, but does have a gate. A. Nisley. I don't know if that's the manufacturer of the gate or the family. And actually, now that I think about it, and I have looked a little more, has the name Nisley on the grave. I'm going to have to do a little more research on that. But he was a veteran of the Civil War. There may be more than one person here, but I'm not sure of that. I hope you've enjoyed this um, this adventure today. Uh, I apologize ahead of time if I got any of the facts wrong. I'm going on uh, a lot of times stuff that I've read and trying to remember that. Uh, so, but I would encourage you to do some of your own research, uh, maybe on some of the names that you've seen. Um, if you if you're into this sort of thing, uh, do some research. Uh, find out a little bit about the people uh, that you're interested in and look around your area. Uh, maybe you'll find uh, some interesting things uh, that are right in your backyard. And uh, I appreciate you watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click like and subscribe uh, on my, my button down there, uh, Two Feet Two Worlds. Uh, thanks for watching.